Steam Crave. It's always something interesting when I mention the name Steam Crave. Way, way back, this must be, wow, 2015. I think it was midway through 2015. I remember being on a live show. This was like less than a year after I started reviewing in March of 2014. I remember being, or watching, sorry, I was watching a live show on Vapors.tv and it was Robert the Armed Vapor. Um, he's still doing reviews to this day. He's mostly concentrating on podcasts, I think. But I remember Robert the Armed Vapor vaping on a dual, no, it was a single battery mod at the time and he had a cut piece of toilet paper tube covering up a tank. Yeah, because it, it was under NDA at the time. And it turned out that tank was the Aromamizer 1, the, the, the original first edition of the Aromamizer 1. Robert the Arm Vapor and a couple of other American reviewers were early testers of the Steam Crave, of Steam Crave's first product. And it Turns out, going into 2022, that if you look at the way things are going, the Aroma Miser line is the oldest, longest running name of rebuildable tanks, and for that matter, in some cases, rebuildable drippers in the market. They've been on the go since midway through 2015. And the way that the Aroma Miser line has been split up, you've got the original Aroma Miser, no plus. No Supreme, just Aroma Miser. That's the baseline, that's the baseline model. There hasn't been a standard Aroma Miser for a number of years now, actually. Then you had the Aroma Miser Supreme. They're up to version three now, I think. Bigger tank, more capacity. And then you had the Aroma Miser Plus, which left at V2. Now we're on version three. This is the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Plus version three, and it marks it marks, what's the word I'm looking for here? It marks the final shift of the Aroma Miser line to put it more on the same track as the likes of the Ragnar. Uh, not so much the Titan, the Titan tanks in its own category, but the Ragnar, it looked as if, if you look at the Ragnar RDTA, it looked as if Steam Crave were using the Ragnar as a test bed for future upgrades of the main line of the Aroma Miser Supreme and Aroma Miser Plus lines because a lot of the innovation that came in with the Ragnar is now being seen in the standard foundation Aroma Miser line. And let's face it, Steam Crave are known for one line of tanks, the Aroma Miser, whether it be the original, the Supreme, of this, the plus. So, what's so different about this Aroma Miser Plus compared to the V2 version of the plus? Only one way to find out. It's time for a tank review. So there was rumours going around about the uh, about the plus getting an overhaul because the V to, the gap between the V2 and the V3 is actually quite a big one because again Steam Crave were Steam Crave were concentrating more on the non Aroma Miser tanks like the Ragnar, like the Titan, the Titan mods, the Hadron series of mods, and the Aroma Misers kind of got forgotten about. Well, not anymore. Let's have a look at the tech specs first, then we'll head down to the table cam. Diameter of the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Plus version 3. Diameter is 30 millimeters. The base is also 30 millimeters because it's basically a straight base down here, as you can see. Overall height, not including the 810 drip tip, you're looking at 51.6 millimeters. Capacity of the tank with the standard glass and the standard retail packaging, not the extras packaging, you're going to be looking at 12 mil, but as far as I'm led to believe, there's a 14 and 18 milliliter bubble glass that this comes with, and it's side and bottom airflow, and the deck of the, I think from what I remember, the base of this decks from the Aroma Miser Plus V2, from what I remember, the V2 and the Aroma Miser Supreme 
is compatible or need to dig a little bit deeper and check with that. But existing decks from the current generation of Aroma Miser Plus and Aroma Miser Supreme, some of them, if not all of them, are actually compatible with the base fitting of this tank. Onto the table cam. So this is this is basically like looking at an old friend because the aroma misers, they are just phenomenal tanks. They always have been. In the packaging for this, you don't get that many spare options though. There is only one deck with this and it's the deck that it comes with actually in the packaging. I think, although I'm not sure about this, I think there's two different types of packaging for the aroma miser. Plus, uh, plus V3. The one I've got is the standard retail, but I think there may be a limited edition one that's got extra decks in the packaging, but again, I'm not quite sure. So you're looking at the Aroma Miser Plus V3 in its standard configuration, starting at the top. Don't know why they've put that in there, that little ridge in the drip tip. Odd decision, but you do, of course, have your 810 drip tip. Push fit, there's no O-rings on the, on the actual drip tip. Along the top here, you've got Aroma Miser, Steam Crave, V3 plus RDTA, all the usual stuff. Twist the top, give it a turn, and you've got the usual fucking huge juice fill openings there. There we go. Looking at the main tank itself, you do, of course, have that classic wide open glass barrel. No bubble glasses, you don't fucking need the bubble glass in this, the thing holds a shitload of fucking juice in there. Down below that you do of course have the obligatory, as always with the Aroma Miser line, juice flow control. So if we have a look, where is it? It's right there. If you look right there, you should see the juice flow control opening and closing as I'm turning this. So basically when you fill the thing up, you lock it off so the juice doesn't fall into the deck. Fill your tank up, once your tank's filled up, you just simply twist this over and that unlocks the juice flow. Now for the biggest change, the airflow configuration system. And this is the major difference between the V2 and the V3 and it's another big step forward for the Aroma Miser line. Down here at the bottom, you've got a separate air hole all by itself. And that air hole is directing to a bottom airflow system in the deck that's included in here. So you've got a hole there and you've got another hole there. Right now, I've configured this for bottom airflow only. But if we open this up, again, you've got just the same air hole all the way around. There's no difference in the size. Same air hole all the way around for the bottom air hole. But now the side airflow is starting to open up. So as we twist this round, you can see as you slowly bring this round, more and more air holes start to open up on the deck. So now we're looking at row of five here, row of five here, bottom air hole, row of five, row of five, bottom air hole. But you can still keep twisting this round to block off the bottom airflow altogether and go with the side airflow. And you can see it. There's my finger on the other end. Side airflow, full side airflow on a tank. This is where RDTA comes from. Rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. You've got side airflow like some of the common drippers that were out from 2015 all the way up till now. And it's one of the few line of tanks that have kept this going since, since its original inception way back in 2015. And they were the first tank to do it. Steam Crave were the first company to do this all the way back in 2015 with the original Aroma Miser RDTA, rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. Full side airflow. See it? Full side airflow. Other companies have tried it in the past to copy what they're doing here, but no one's been really able to nail it quite the way Steam Crave do. So that's the major difference with the air hole. They've now got bottom airflow configuration going in through the deck. Talking about the deck, there's the base here. Usual markings, serial number designed by BJ She, who's been the designer for Steam Crave since they first started. Let's take the base of this thing off and have a look at the deck. So, before we look at the deck, actually, here's the way the airflow's configured. Juice falls in through here, slams into the base, and is drawn up through the bottom. So it wicks like a dripper, wicks from the bottom up. There we go. 
and you've got the airflow chamber in here, so the air just goes straight through. Let's just twist this round. Air goes straight through. There's my finger there, and it acts like a side airflow dripper. And this has been the big draw for these tanks since the beginning. Lots and lots of airflow. But here's the next biggest change. Bottom airflow. So that hole goes all the way through, and that hole lets the air into the honeycomb that's going to be resting under your coils. Much more simpler deck this time round because of that bottom airflow, obviously. Coil goes across there, coil goes across there. Nothing fancy. So let's actually pop a couple of coils in here. What size? Is it that one? Mm, no, it's not. It must be the one down from that. Uh, which is that one? Yeah, that's the one. So let's just pull these out. Just like that. There we go. Right, now what we need is to, we need to pop this on our Red Stag build tab. People have been asking me about this. It's basically a DNA 200, an old school DNA 200 board sitting inside a plastic chassis with a big fuck off lipo at the top. It's basically, it's, 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 a DNA two, it's a DNA 200 sitting on its side with a build platform on top. That's all it is. Red Stag, that's the company that made it. I don't know if they're still going. I've had this for, what, five years now I've had this for? So I'd want to, one, two, three, four, five... I want to lock it so I don't set the thing off by accident. Couple of fused Clapton's going to go in here. Nothing fancy. Plus I've ran out of aliens. All I've got left is fused Clapton's. We're going to go with a coily tool and we're going to cut the legs at five millimetre long. In fact, hold on. Ah, yeah. It's a normal depth. It's a normal postless deck depth. So we'll go for five millimetres. Da -da -da. Here we go. Would have loved to have put aliens in here, but I've run out of the damn things. Use them all on the Eclipse and uh, the Eclipse and uh, the Blotto tank that I've got running up at the house. Pop you in there. Let's just snip you down. Snip you down. Oh, there's also people asking me about this. This little spring here actually cut you've seen it it catches the end of the wire so it doesn't ping up and scratch the lens who made it who made it well it's called nipex and they're based in germany i think you can actually get them in the united states as well really really good really really good snips those now let's start popping the coils in so we're going to pop one in here push it all the way down we can pull it up later on where did i put that there it is Love working on these decks. They are so easy to work on. So easy to work on. That's one in. Spin it round. Pop you in. And that's the second one. And now we need a coil master. Uh, go for two millimetre. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just enough to pull these coils over. Let's zoom this in a bit more. Pull these coils over so we're getting edge coverage. There's the two edge, there's the edge air holes. You want to line these up so the edge, put it in the coil, Vic, you fool. The edge of the coil is getting skirted by the bottom airflow, which also means that the, air, the back edge of the coil is also getting skirted because there's the two air holes there. It's all about getting the coil placement right on steam craved decks, even the new ones. Push you over, there's the two air holes, pull it back. That looks good to me. Do we need to pull these up? No, we don't, they are perfect. Right, let's dry burn these up, locked. One, two, three, four, five. Let's dry burn these in. Where the hell's my tweezers went? Ah, there they are. Let the heat do the work first. There we go. 
Done. Any hot spots on the inside? Nothing. Perfect. Right. Wicking this is also easy because you've got two huge juice wells in there. Just place the cotton down and you're basically done. This is why I've always loved working on steam crave tanks because they are some of the easiest tanks to coil and wick on. They always have been from the very beginning of the early iterations of this tank. It's so easy to work on. Da, da, da. Let's try that. That's way too much cotton, Vic. Way too much cotton. And another dod. There we go. I've just realised I've left the radio ringing in the background. Hopefully the mic's not picking it up and I don't get a copyright strike. I don't think the mic will be though. The radio's down pretty low. Right. Scissors. Scissors. This is what happens, oh there they are, this is what happens when I've cleaned the table, I can't bloody find anything, right. So we want enough cotton to reach down but not poke through that juice intake there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it round about there. So we're going to be leaving about a centimetre and a half of cotton on either side. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do a mini rake on this. I don't want to rake it out too much, that's a lot of cotton to shove in that little that little hole there, so we're going to rake this out to thin it out just a touch. Same with the other side, rake it out just to thin it out a little bit. So we're not forcing the cotton in and compressing the cotton down. Snip and snip. And then we simply just get the cotton and work it down, just pushing it to the side and letting the cotton fall in all by itself. You notice I'm not going straight down with this. It's, a, it's the trick that you do with all these tanks. Push the cotton into the side and let the cotton find its own way down as it slowly slides off the end of your tweezers. And that way you're not forcing the cotton in and compressing the cotton down. Which is one of the big problems that other reviewers out there do. They force the cotton in. They compress the cotton so much at the base that the juice is basically choked off. They don't get a dry hit, but they get less liquid getting to the coil, therefore they get less flavour. This is why some reviewers say, I don't get flavour from steam crave tanks, because you can't wick worth a fuck, that's why, right? <laughs> so It's a fucking bugbear of mine, it always has been. Absolute fucking bugbear. I don't get any flavour. That's because you're compressing the cotton, and you're not getting enough juice flow. That's why you're not getting enough flavour, right. Pushing it to the side, letting that cotton slide in. I may have cut this slightly too short. No, I haven't. I haven't. There we go. The cotton can end up looking like that. See that? There is no cotton sticking out the base. And the idea is you want the you want the liquid. Well, there's a little bit of cotton sticking out there, but it's not too bad. You want the liquid to slide in under the deck and saturate the base of the cotton. That way, when you're chain hitting in this thing, you're not going to get a dry hit. I have run out of liquid. Because that bottle is not going to be enough to fill that tank up. What do I have here? Blah, I'm not using black vine because I'm running out of that. Where did that bottle of lemon lush go? Hold on, folks. I'm sure I had a bottle of lemon lush here. Is it on the other table? See, this is what... Ah, there it is. This is what happens when I go, oh, I need to tidy the office. Now I can't fucking find anything. Right, lemon lush. Let's just juice up, oh, way too close. There we go, let's just juice up the cotton. First of all, absolutely soak that on either side so there's no dry spots anywhere. Just like that. And then we run a load of juice along both coils. Quick fire, let the juice soak in. Run it along again, another quick fire, and a couple of drops for good measure. Done and dusted. Then we just get the tank to save holding the tank, because this is going to be roasting, well, not the tank, the deck. This is going to be roasting now. We just get this, line up the notches to the edge, and then we simply just do this with it, which is straight down, grab onto the base and unscrew it from there. And drop it, because you did... Be <laughs> Drop it because you didn't do it right, Vic, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Just do that manually. Come on, in you go. There we go. See it? 
The cotton's not really sticking through, it's acting more like a dam. Classic dam method. Works perfect with these tanks. Right, close off the juice flow, just like that. Open up the top, and we start pouring our liquid in because these tanks hold a lot. There we go. Now, the tank's full. However, the juice flow control is closed off. And there is an extension of the tank going on down here in the base. So if I open the juice flow up, see that? The liquid is just dropping straight down. So we went from a, we went from a full tank to a three-quarters full tank because all of this down here has to be filled up with liquid as well. Anyway, that was the Steam Crave Aromamizer Plus V3. Coiled up, wicked up and ready to go. Let's head back up top. Like what you're seeing? Fancy supporting Vaping with Vic? Uh, this channel, Vaping with Vic, is actually a business for me. Uh, I am currently recording this video and the review that you're watching as well in a dedicated studio just outside the town centre of the town that I live in. Vaping with Vic is completely funded by people on Patreon, Subscribestar and the YouTube members and all the money that comes in for Vaping with Vic is ploughed back into the rent for this studio obviously and for future upgrades to cameras and microphones. If you do like what you're seeing and you do fancy a support and vaping with Vic either in Patreon, Subscribestar, uh, Patreon, Subscribestar or the YouTube members. Links to those are going to be down there in the description. Back on to the review. Back up top with the Steam Crave Aromizer Plus V3. <laughs> this is a big tank. V3 RDTA G Class version 1. I'm popping this on top of so it doesn't overhang. Look at the size of that tank. That is a big tank. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Airflow control is fully open. And we're going to go with the bottom airflow open as well. Because what we're going to do first of all is we're going to crank the G-Class up to 140. Nah, well, it's small coils I've got in here. Yeah, we'll go for 140. 140 watts. And we're off. That's a lot of vapour and that's a rather cold vape. That's a rather cold vape. I basically clouded out the studio in three hits. Damn. That was the Aroma Miser Plus V3 RDTA. What do I think of this? The eyes and the fact. Hold on a minute. You know what? Let's just close this off and we'll go with bottom airflow only. But we're going to drop this down to 90 watts. Which is going to be a lot more restrictive. That's a little bit too hot. There's not enough in there, there's not enough air getting in there to cool it down. We'll go for 75 watts. There we go. See, that's too restrictive. Just the bottom air hole only. Bottom air hole only. You're going to be looking at something that's a little bit too restrictive. Side airflow only with the bottom airflow switched off. A lot area. So you've got choices. Uh, with airflow, with the way that this thing's been designed. The Aromamizer Plus V3 RDTA, what do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. There is major differences between the way that the V2 was made with the airflow system the V2 has between that tank and this tank. And you can tell the major differences is going on because now they've got a separate bottom airflow channel on a separate bottom airflow control that's included in the main ring. But <coughs> even though there is some similarities, like very overgeneralized similarities between the V2 airflow system and the V3 airflow system. The fact that they've managed to get the bottom and the top or the bottom and the side airflow 
to work on the same ring, but still give you the option of locking off the side airflow for bottom airflow only for a very, very restrictive direct to lung draw, or locking off the bottom airflow to give you the old, old style, older Romamizer style side airflow only means that Mr. BJ She has put a little bit of thought into this, how this is actually going to run. It is an aromamizer. It's an aromamizer. It's an RDTA. Side airflow like a dripper with the addition of a bottom airflow honeycomb system on the new style deck that's in here with the Plus. But you can also tell it's an aromamizer just by looking at the damn tank because this looks an awful lot like the Ragnar, and the Ragnar got its looks from the Supreme and the Plus iterations of the much older Aromamizer line. There is a certain look that goes with these tanks, and at least for the past half decade, Steam Crave have not stepped away from what everyone knows what the look of the Aromamizer line is. Flavour from this thing, even with tiny little coils like just normal fused Claptons, the flavour from this is what you would expect from a Steam Crave tank. As long as you wick it correctly and don't go <laughs> and compress all the cotton in so no juice is getting to your coil. As long as you wick it correctly, you're going to end up with a tank that will literally give you flavour that's on par or damn close to your favourite dripper. Crank up that wattage to over 100 watts open up the airflow, let a load of air in to cool the coils down, and you will end up with a tank that acts like a dripper. Hence the name Rebuildable Dripping Tank Atomizer. That's what these things were famous for. There's a caveat to that though. They plow through liquid. They absolutely plow through liquid. That's why the tanks are so damn big, because of the bigger capacity in there. But you're going to be filling that thing up. If you're going to be chain hitting on it, you're going to be filling that thing up every half hour. Probably even less than that if you're going to be chain hitting on the thing. It's an Aromamizer Plus V3, folks, and no doubt that tank will end up somewhere in the top three tanks of this year. It's a guarantee. It will end up somewhere in the top three tanks of this year. When you get an Aromamizer, any of the Aromamizers, the original ones, the Plus or the Supremes, and you coil it and wick it correctly, you end up with one of the best tanks on the market. Period. That's what it all comes down to. But again, you've got to get the wicking right. So, yeah, this is probably going to end up coming home with me and I'm probably going to turn this into my regular peach custard tank. That's what's going to end up with this thing. So, yeah, big thanks to the folks at Steam Crave for sending over the Plus V3 for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do now below. Give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. And the immediate latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Flow Farm, the Patreon subscribe stars and the YouTube members for keeping Vape and Vigor float financially. That's what's paying for this studio. And underneath me is the Vape level. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.